Hey, can I get a shout out? Anybody got any shout outs? What does it take to get a shout out up in here? <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. The other thing we try to do on this channel is just put out some information, put out some knowledge, some maybe some tips, some tricks, some advice as far as art, how to be a better artist, how to make living as an artist, how to build an audience. So that's a little bit we're gonna talk about today, sort of that building an audience. There's one way some people go about trying to build an audience that hasn't really made a lot of sense for me, and that is the whole idea of shout outs and how valuable a lot of people think shout outs are. And in my experience, that's really not the case, and I'll go into that a little bit. But I was going through my YouTube comment section. Now, if you, are, if you don't have a YouTube channel, maybe you don't know this, but the way YouTube works is that in their comment section, they break things down. There's, there's the comments, and then they've got like, I think potentially uh, spammy, and then I forgot exactly how it had split up, but or the definitely spammy or something like that. So it filters out a lot of these comments. So I don't always see some of these things where people are just going in and like, hey, can you give me a shout out? Can you mention my channel? This type of thing. So I don't always see that. But every once in a while, I will go into those other filters because there are things like, I guess the way YouTube figures that out is that if somebody leaves a link, then it is probably potential spam because people are trying to get you to go somewhere else. Or if it's just kind of that repeat, you know, a lot of times people leave the same comment over and over again, you'll see that just totally spamming. But every once in a while, there is somebody that has some information that they're trying to leave for me that they find that they think I'll find useful. And a lot of times those are either a link to maybe some cool tools or, or a video that they thought I might like that's not necessarily like, hey, check out my stuff or whatever. Unfortunately, sometimes some of that stuff does wind up in there. But when you do go through there, there's just a lot of people like, can you mention me? Can you do this? And I don't know, that just doesn't seem like a very good way to try to build an audience because like I said, it hasn't, it hasn't worked for me. Not that I'm going in people's thing and saying, can you mention me, can you mention me? But when I am mentioned on another channel or whatever, it really, I don't notice any sizable change and I've been mentioned by some pretty big channels. Anyway, I wanna talk about that. We're gonna do another blueprint sketch. We'll get into that. We'll talk about why Asking for shout outs probably isn't the best way to grow your channel and then maybe some alternatives And I guess if you are going to ask for some sort of a shout out maybe the uh, a better way to do that So let's get to that. We're gonna do a drawing and uh, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about shout outs So do shout outs really work? Well first I want to talk about the definition of a shout out now of course, most of you guys know what a shout out is. Just basically asking somebody to mention them, mention their channel, and then of course what's gonna happen is everyone that follows that person is gonna go and check out this other person and they're just gonna get this influx of followers and it's just gonna be awesome. Unfortunately, that's not really the way it works, at least in my experience, and I've never really heard too many cases where it does. There may be you know, some small percentage of people, and maybe if it's done in a, in a certain way or whatever, maybe it could be effective, but in most cases, Cases if just leaving you know leaving something in somebody's comment section and usually if you're doing that you want to go with a pretty big youtuber a lot of big youtubers they don't really have time to go through their comment section and even respond let alone give shout outs and things like that and as I mentioned before most of those requests are just gonna go into the spam filter and no one's gonna see it anyway so you know if you've left one of those and you're upset because the person didn't get back to them chances are they didn't even see it because it's probably going into that spam folder or whatever on the YouTube comment section I think asking for a shout out, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm, that's not something that I've ever done personally. Now I will admit that, you know, I'll be watching a, uh, an art video or something uh, and a lot of times, it, because I usually watch people that are in sort of the same art community that I'm involved in, so a lot of times my name will get dropped and people will mention me and everything. And I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of an ego boost. It always makes me smile and I like that, especially when they have nice things to say about me. It's a good feeling and I like that idea about shout outs. So I guess it depends on what you're looking for from a shout out. And 
again, this isn't something I've ever asked anyone to do, but when you do get mentioned, it's a nice feeling. That's the good part about a shout out. If it's, if it's just to pay tribute to somebody or just give them a mention or say something nice about them, not really expecting that because you do that or because somebody's doing that for you that you're just gonna get a, a lot of new followers or whatever from, from that because I just don't I, don't, I don't think that works. I mean, just because a person has a lot of followers and they're into the content that they're doing, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be into what you're doing. It may be in a similar vein. A lot of times it's not though. A lot of times people request shout outs for something just in a totally different area or uh, not just shout outs, but sometimes I'll get requests to review products or something and it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. I'm like, why would I do that to my audience? It's a little odd, and a lot of times people don't even pay attention to what your, your audience is when they're requesting something like that. They just send it out to a bunch of people and hopefully something sticks. A little different from shout outs, so I don't wanna to go too deep into that. But, you know, audiences can be different, and an audience, you may see a YouTuber with tons of followers but are those followers engaged followers? Unfortunately, I could probably say that about my own followers. By YouTube standards, I'm not like a big YouTuber. To a lot of people just starting off, it may look impressive, but if you look at my followers, or my subscribers, I should say, I guess, on, on YouTube, uh, I've got, at right now what I'm doing, I've got a little over 15,000. Now, I know a lot of people who have way lower subscribers, channels that I watch that get a lot more views. I don't get for, the amount of views, I mean, I put out a new video on average, it may get around 300 views. <laughs> and, and when you compare that to that 15,000 subscribers, that's not amazing. And also, if you look at my comment section, I don't, you know, some people's comment sections, you'll look on a video and they just, it just goes on and on. Mine don't. I mean, and, and the weird thing is, I mean, I do respond to pretty much every comment I get, so I try to engage my audience, but for whatever reason, Everyone's different, and I don't, I don't know why certain things happen the way they do on YouTube. Sometimes it's algorithm, whatever the case is. To expect just because I have 15,000 followers, if you're gonna ask me for a shout out or whatever, you see that big number when in fact the people watching it is quite less than what that subscriber count would lead you to believe. So that's another thing to consider. And again, that engagement, are those people, do those people value the opinion of the person they're watching so much that they're gonna drop everything to go follow somebody because they mention them? Especially if there's no real example, if it's just, you know, and we'll get into, we'll get into some of that in a minute as far as maybe some, if you are gonna do a shout out uh, or ask for a shout out. But I don't even want to say that because I don't want people going around asking for shout outs, but well, we'll get, kind of get into that a little bit. But if somebody does give a shout out, um, if you really want to try to send people to somebody else's you know, YouTube page or YouTube channel or whatever because you like the work that they're doing, um, you gotta do a little more than just an off-handed comment sort of mention them because it just doesn't work. I've been mentioned on tons of channels and it doesn't always, I, I, I've never really noticed a big change uh, when that happens uh, in, in my, you know, viewership or my subscribership or whatever. So case in point, uh, I did sort of uh, a partnership, I guess you would say, for a really big YouTuber, a YouTuber who had at the time, I think like 3.5 million subscribers. That's a lot, you know, <laughs> if to, reach, to reach a million, that's pretty good. And to uh, triple that, I think right now, they're got over 4 million subscribers. Um, but I did it sort of an art collaboration with them because they were doing a tour and uh, they wanted me to do uh, a poster design. So I did that sort of in a, a reduced rate thinking, oh, this is gonna be great. And this is my naivety. Uh, and this, that's why I kind of want to talk about this because I thought, oh, I'm gonna, I'll do this design for a lot less than I normally would because there's a lot of value in this. I mean, he's gonna show this poster on his channel, and uh, and people are gonna be and out of you know three and a half million subscribers, imagine just if a small fraction of them came to my channel. I mean, that could really give me a huge boost. And so, you know, what happened and everything, you know, shows the, the poster, mentions my channel, 
and it really it did nothing. That particular, I also had a video uh, featuring, uh, I, 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 there's no reason why I can't mention it. Alex Clark, if you ever watch It's Alex Clark, great channel, does animation, very humorous animation. So anyway, we did this collaboration. He mentioned me, showed the poster, and then I also on my channel did a little uh, video on the creation of that poster. And that video got a little more views than my average video, but not any more than some of my videos got. I've got, I've got videos on my channel that got way more views than that. So it really wasn't anything. And then some of the people that did come over, they even made the comments like, oh, you know, he mentioned you on your channel. I bet you're, I bet you're super excited because you're gonna get all these people. And that didn't really happen. There weren't, there weren't that many people that came over. And part of that is because I don't think our audience is really jive for one. And for one, for the other is I just don't think people, like I said, are gonna take the time to, to look, even if it's somebody who's an influencer like that with that kind of a following and go and hop on somebody else's to do what they're doing. And because I'm not doing animation, because I'm doing a different thing. I think I'm doing some fun stuff. I think I'm doing uh, stuff that could appeal to some members of his audience, but his audience are relatively young. And uh, a lot of the content that I do here is like what I'm talking about now, kind of how to become a better artist, how to make a living doing art. And they're probably not as interested in that, even though, you know, the flashy colors and all that stuff that you see in the beginning of the videos, and hopefully it's entertaining, but still not really something that's gonna gravitate to an audience like that so in turn it really it did pretty much nothing so you know put that into perspective yeah, uh, somebody may come to me somebody with 15,000 subscribers uh, <laughs> wanted me to shout out their stuff and hopefully that's gonna give their channel a boost uh, yeah I mean if a, if a, if a 3.5 million subscriber channel can't do anything for me chances are that my measly 15 <laughs> I don't want to say measly because I appreciate everyone that does follow me and again the viewer the, my views are quite less than what that subscriber count would make you think so chances are you're really not gonna get anything out of it so keep that in mind so please don't think that just because somebody gives you a shout out that that's going to give you your channel uh, or you're following just this huge boost chances are it's not gonna happen like that I'm I am living proof of that so are there any cases where shout outs actually work well I, I think and these aren't necessarily shout outs but I think there are other ways to sort of build your audience but I think the main thing to understand is people have to get to know you people aren't likely just because your name is mentioned or somebody said oh this person's cool or whatever to go and check out whatever you're doing they really somebody needs to be introduced more to what you're doing and a lot of times how you can do that is like if you do like I've done interviews on other channels or whatever and you know they're lengthy interviews they can be like half hour sometimes an hour or more and in that span of time people get to know you and and if they like what you're saying if they like your personality uh, they're more apt to go and check out what you're doing rather than that they just hear your name and have no context behind that so interviews collaborations are great collaborations are a chance to you know sort of talk with other creators that you admire and and that can you that can introduce you to another audience the trick is you have to have something sort of to offer you've got to have either a similar size audience or 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 some other thing and I'll get into that in a minute as far as don't just go to somebody asking for something for nothing another thing is just communities in general art communities Kind of how I got started doing YouTube was through the uh, 100 Days of Making Comics, uh, started by Kevin Cross, and I got in that fairly early. I think I was like the second or third person to kind of join that challenge. It wasn't even really a challenge, just something he was doing, and a couple other people thought that was cool, and they want to get on in on it. So I got in uh, early, so that sort of helped. I think uh, being an early adopter to things really does help. So community collaborations. The other thing that helps a lot that I've seen that really works in some cases, and there is a caveat to that, are guest spots. Sometimes YouTube channels, and this is this is goes back to what I'm gonna talk about in a minute as far as don't just ask for something for nothing. If you can offer a larger creator something, creators need to take breaks and go do other things, so they need to fill that time to keep their channel going. So sometimes they'll have like a guest spot, and if you have some valuable information, uh, maybe you can reach out to a creator saying, you know, I think your, your audience would really be interested in this. It might help out. It might take some of the burden off of you. 
you, you know, if we do like a guest spot or vice versa. But I've, I've seen this happen with, if any of you guys follow James, the box office artist, he did a guest spot on uh, Jazz's channel. Uh, Jazz has got a huge channel, and now James, box office artist, is his channel is over a million now. Pretty impressive. But here's the thing. Just because he went on there and did a guest spot on Jazz's channel, if he didn't, first of all, if he didn't have good content on that video, people aren't going to stick around because people are going there to see Jazz and when they see somebody else, they might be like, yeah, I don't really need to see this. So you got to add value to that. And the other thing is, uh, box office artist channel, I mean, he really knows what he's doing. First of all, he had all the pieces in place. He had a great channel. So if you are going to go to it, you've got to you've got to be ready for that. If if you do get an influx of people at least checking you out, you got to make sure that they're going to stick around and subscribe and check out your stuff. So you have to have good content to, to begin with. And he's really, he's smart about the way that he does his videos. I mean, for me, a lot of it is very, you know, kind of uh, click friendly to be kind, click baity to be a little more you know but you know people like that and it does work and he's got he's just he's got some unique fun ideas and things so that's sort of what it takes you can't even if people if you do get people to check you out that's not the end of it you've got to put out great content and you've got to uh, make it so people stick around or that they'll, they'll subscribe to begin with so it's fairly easy for somebody with some sort of audience to approach another person with a similar size audience and sort of do that kind of collaboration thing. There are a lot of other artists right there out there that have about the same size audience to me and that's maybe something I should do more of is see if people want to collaborate like that because a, there is a small percentage of their audience that will check out what you're doing and vice versa and that can help if you do that a lot it's it is it can that can be effective not everyone especially people who are trying to grow on YouTube have any kind of audience or any kind of leverage there because just just reaching out and saying hey can you you give me, give me a shout out people that have big audience chances are they've probably done some work to get there so it comes off as a little entitled for you just to expect them to put everything aside and maybe risk something that's going on in their channel just start mentioning people and sending them to people you don't even necessarily know and maybe their channels like not great or maybe they're saying something that the that doesn't jive with what the you know the person sending them to does and so it just becomes a big headache and it's not something that a practice that i think is a good idea but there are ways to go about that you don't want to just ask for something for nothing but if you don't already have an audience so what do you do well there are things that you can do now there's a few channels out there that have done or still do uh things like that that may work out and again i don't think these tactics are really sending a lot of people to the <laughs> these other artists but here's 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 a couple of channels so uh comic tropes if you watch comic tropes at the end of every one of his video um he has people sending in fan art and uh and he'll pick out a winner and everything so and the fan art has to be specific to kind of what he's doing not just general fan art so people take the time to do an art piece and send it in and so so they're offering content for him that he can showcase at the end of the video and in the end their their work gets to be shown you know on camera and everything like that and then and, you know and a mention so and he does mention where to find them I've never clicked on any of those things I don't think a lot of people have I'm sure if you ask anyone who's ever had their artwork featured on there if they got a big boost after that I'm sure they're gonna tell you no so it doesn't necessarily work but that is something you can do um, I do a lot of unboxing videos not a lot but every once in a while I do an unboxing video so a lot of the times people send me comics and mini comics because I've done a lot of videos on mini comics and I like looking at those I like opening those up on camera and I'll do that I don't know if people it, it, let me know if I've unboxed one of your mini comics on the channel if, if it's sent a lot of people to your to whatever you're doing let me know I doubt it but but it is kind of cool to see your stuff open up on somebody else's channel the other thing thing is uh, Cartoonist Fake Kayfabe. If you watch that channel, they'll do a mailbag episode where they'll just open comics and I've sent comics into them and I've had my comics opened up on their videos and nothing happened from that. So, But it was cool to see their, their stuff on there and hopefully they enjoy the comic and everything. BJ Dell, if you've checked out his channel, he do, I don't think he does it anymore, but for a while he had this big community where they he'd give a challenge and different people would participate and they'd do a critique and, you know, and he's really good about wanting to share with 
other people are doing, but I don't think that's going to send a lot of people to those, you know, those channels. It just doesn't work that way. And I guess that's the main thing that I'm trying to get across is that, you know, just because your work is featured on somebody else's channel or whatever, uh, don't get your hopes up because it's probably not going to do much other than give you a, a little ego boost. And, you know, and that is a good thing. All right, so let's say you've heard all this video and you're still like, well, I don't care. I'm going to ask for shout outs. What's a better way to ask for a shout out? Okay, so again, don't ask for something for nothing. When you get even like the sub for sub, I'll sub to your channel if you sub to mine, especially if you're sending to somebody who has like a lot more subs, it's really not going to do anything for some for one person to sub to their channel. So I would stay away from that. So I've noticed that most people that ask for shout outs, they're people that I have never even seen like comment on another video. If you're going to ask for shout out, and again, I'm not recommending that you do this, but at least form some sort of relationship with that person. And in my mind, what you should do is do that anyway and not ask for a shout out. And then if you do something cool, like you do do a piece of fan art or whatever, or give them some help or some information with a problem they might have. Like a lot of times I'm looking for content and sometimes I don't know, well, what should I make a video on? And then somebody will give me a suggestion and then I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And then I mentioned that person that gave me this, the suggestion. So if you can do something like that, but engage people in the comments, engage, you know, creators or whatever, and then people will get to know you. But most people, it's just like, can you mention me with no context or anything? They don't even know who you are. There's no, you know, vetting. There's no, there's, you know, you gotta, you, people have to know you, I think, to feel good about endorsing people because an endorsement is a big thing and it can be powerful. I mean, you go to Amazon, most, a lot of people make their spine decisions on how many reviews it has and that's an endorsement. So uh, the endorsements can be powerful, but if you don't know anything about that person, you're not gonna give them a shout out. You're not gonna sing their praises not knowing what those praises are, if there are any. And I noticed this like on my Facebook Facebook page, I'll get, you know, requests from people. And usually if I if I honor a request, a friend request on Facebook, it's because they're a friend of a friend or they have a lot of friends in common. So at least I, again, that's sort of an endorsement. I know if my other friends are friend, Facebook friends with this person, then chances are, then, you know, maybe I'll be friends with them too. I, when I get a request from somebody that I have no friends or anything and there's nothing else attached to that, I usually don't honor it. A lot of times those are people that find me through, there's an old game that I used to work on and I found that most people that come from that game, all they're doing is asking me for free work. So I tend not to, to, not to honor those. But here's the thing, if, if and you're like, well, I don't have any of your friends, but I really like what you're doing. I'd like to talk with you on Facebook or whatever. And just so you guys know, I'm not really that active on Facebook, but I'll get like, you know, I'll get these friend requests with nothing to them. All you have to do is introduce yourself. You know, instead of just sending your friend request with nothing attached to it and no one knowing who you are expecting them to say, oh, okay, you're my friend. And maybe people friend people for no other reason. I don't know, but just say, I'm, I'm just starting out. I really like what you're doing. I'd love to connect with you on Facebook. If, if I got something like that, sure, I'll, I'll honor that. Or, or whatever the case is, you know, but, but let people know who you are. Introduce yourself. Don't just expect people to either give you a follow or a shout out or whatever, just for no other reason than you asked for it. Because there's a lot of other people asking for that and it does get annoying. So just be smart about it. If you are going to ask for a shout out or a mention or whatever you want to call it. All right, so there you go, another blueprint sketch, another talk about shout outs. What do you think about shout outs? Well, before I, before I go, before I kind of get into that question, uh, I want to do something a little different. I actually do want to give some shout outs, not because any of these people asked for it, because I do think that these are some channels that could use some attention that I really like, that maybe don't get the attention they use, or just because they're super cool people. And Again, I don't really think this is really gonna help your channel, so if I do mention you, uh, don't get so excited. But uh, again, I think it's kind of a, a nice gesture when people mention me, so some people that I do want to mention. First off is Frank Salazar, Salazar Art Nation. I'll mention all of these in the channel. Frank is an uh, he's a perfect example of what I was talking about, a bit just about just being an awesome member of the community. This guy never asks for a shout out or anything like that, but he's always there. You know, he's out there like advertising the stuff that I do and just talking me up and, and you know, supporting me by, you know, 
buying products and things that I put out and commenting and sharing and all that kind of stuff. He's got his own channel. He's doing something kind of cool. I don't know if he's going to continue to do this. I hope he does. And I haven't checked it out yet. But I'm going to. So uh, I imagine it'll be pretty cool. But so if anyone doesn't know, I do a live stream every week called the Art Casters. And it's just, uh, just a bunch of artists talking back and forth. I do that with my friend Joshua Kimball. We have a guest on. Well, Frank put out something like something called, I can't believe it's not the Art Casters, where he does sort of the same thing. Thing. and I just kind of had a chuckle when I saw that so definitely check out Frank's channel see what he's doing um, very small channel just kind of getting started uh, but he's you know he's always cracking me up in the comment section he's always got something funny so check out Frank at Salazar Art Nation link in the description uh, the other one I want to mention is Crimson Owl Comics that is Ronnie Gunter, and he also, he's a patron of mine. He's one of these guys that's always in the chat and everything. Um, I've talked to him. Uh, he's, you know, I do a, a live Patreon thing, so I've had conversations with him. And the thing that he's doing over there with his partner, Jason Alexander, on their on the, on the Crimson Owl channel is they're reviewing comics. And they did a whole four episode review of my comic, Young and the Dead. And they usually review uh, like horror comics. Uh, so, and they've just got some good insight on that kind of stuff and uh, definitely go check that out. There's another one, now this is a larger channel, larger than mine, but I don't think it's as big as it, it probably will get really big, but it's one of those that um, it's, I think it's fairly new. It's called The Smuggler's Room and they design like Star Wars props and uh, the guy that does it, him and his wife, mostly him but everyone's his wife will show up, but they do they do a bunch of like prop builds and things like that and he's just got his production value is off the charts, the, the, the what he puts into those videos. It's just a real fun channel and it looks like one that could really, really blow up. I think right now as I'm recording this he's around 20,000 subscribers but I think this is one to watch out for. Or if you haven't checked that out, if you like that kind of content, uh, and he's just building, basically the theme is building something out of nothing, which I'm a big fan of. I've been big as far as designing Halloween costumes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just finding little bits and pieces that I can put together and make something. Uh, so I love that channel, very cool channel. Another channel, this, this, is, this is one that, unfortunately it's kind of a dead channel. I don't think they've posted anything new in over a year, but it's just so awesome and they really don't have much of a following. I think they're like 500 followers, but the production value and everything, again just amazing and it's just such an awesome concept but it's called future cyborg and what they do is these two guys and they do toy reviews but they do like old toys like you know back in the 80s in box men in box and it's like they're in the 80s they're dressed in the 80s they use 80s vernacular the video production looks like it's filmed in the 80s and their set looks like it's in the 80s, like in their mom's basement or something. And just the character, the two characters are just hilarious. And <laughs> I mean, it's just, like I said, they I don't know they're gonna produce any more con, uh, content, but the ones that they have up there are definitely worth checking out. But they do these unboxings, and it's like in the 80s, where they'll take these vintage uh, toys, and they'll just rip the packages open, with no regard for anything like that. And it's just so awesome, because that's the way it was in the 80s. You didn't think that those boxes were gonna be worth anything. You get that toy, you're like ripping it up. And, and people, some people will kind of cringe, because, oh no, that's a collector's item, but it is the funniest thing. Um, so check out Future Cyborg if you like that kind of thing. Uh, the other one I want to mention is comic book Black Belt. That is Russ Leach. He is about to, pretty soon he's going to release his comic book Only Death Can Save Us. Awesome artist. He's done work for, you know, like Marvel and, and uh, he's done work on like the Doctor Who uh, comic and um, and it's still, he's still kind of a growing channel. So, but his artwork is amazing and just, and he's got great insights. If you like the kind of stuff I talk about as far as creating comics, you'll like that. He did a whole run through on how to make comics the Marvel way where he sort of recreated some of the, went through the, some of the pages and everything. And he's actually worked on, um, there's a, I think how to draw the Marvel way. Uh, it was a, a series that was published in the UK where she worked on. So definitely check out Russ Leach's channel, Comic Book Black Belt. So those are five uh, places that I would recommend. There's so many others I could, and sorry if I didn't mention you. Um, but again, don't be, don't be too sorry because I don't think you're going to get a lot of, I don't think these five guys are going to get a lot of, of people going to check them out maybe we'll find out we'll check in with them and see if after I did this video if they're like man what happened I got I got tons of people I doubt it that's just kind of shout, how shout outs work and that's what I wanted to kind of get off my chest and maybe hopefully if you weren't sort of aware of the reality of shout outs now you know 
All right, uh, what do you think about shoutouts? Let me know in the comments section. I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.